back on the Sea Morning Show. The quality of education in rural cities or regions are often tied to available infrastructure and local culture. In some areas, education can even be deemed less important than applicable or practical knowledge. Yes, sadly so. Uh, I also noticed that uh, in remote areas, there still is a struggle to recruit and retain teachers, which mm. are pillars of education. Mm. In some places, educational institutions have to go so far as to train their own teachers to face the shortages. Yes, and unfortunately, there are several non-profit organizations which are concerned of educational quality in rural areas. Now, let's meet a, a non-government organization called Youth for Education. So they focus on developing learning institutions and empowering women as well as the youth through educational activities. Yes, and joining us this morning is Youth for, a youth for Education founder Mashifa and Youth for Education volunteer Nadia. Good morning to the Hi. both of you. Good morning, girl. <laughs> All right, so... Hi. Okay, ah, there can you, you hear us? Can you hear us, both of you? Yeah. Okay. Mashifa, can you hear us as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. Perfect. So, um, uh, Shifa, Mashifa, can we draw parallels just between the Youth for Education organization and a student exchange program? Can you briefly explain to us what is the organization, uh, organization's background and what is its focal point? Okay, Youth for Education. Uh, the first uh, first time I say thank you to you to invite Youth for Education to this program. Uh, youth for Education is a, uh, uh, we have a tagline Youth Collaboration for Better Future Education. Mm. So we invite all the youth to make a direct impact to education. So uh, we are a uh, non-government organization focused on sector education and we established in September 2018 mm -hmm. so our first program is we held a program in Vietnam the name is Facebook Voluntary uh, International Care and Education in Vietnam with my co-founder Mm. So this is not yes. just here in Indonesia, but it's actually also an ASEAN-wide network. ASEAN. Yeah, actually this is in Asia, but only several countries in Asia. Oh, That's okay. Vietnam, Thailand, uh, Singapore, mm. and Indonesia. I see. Okay, so um, um, Bashif, I also want to know um, about your concern um, regarding educational um, quality, especially in Indonesia and across ASEAN. Uh, what issue that is actually prompted you to establish this organization? Okay, the issue, maybe I come from the simple issue that I found mm -hmm. when I'm volunteering in Vietnam and Thailand. Okay. So I found, uh, I found the different how the teacher mm teach in every country, in Vietnam, in Thailand, so I am amazed when I have experience in Thailand. Okay. Yeah, when in Indonesia, as we know, our education is focused on score and uh, focus and score and examinations. Mm. Uh -huh. uh, but we found, I found, I found in Thailand, one of the teachers shared to me, Thailand shared to me, Children there uh, uh, learn how to find themselves, like uh, critical thinking, something mm. like that. So the teachers, most children there, mm. were taught how they live. Okay. How they live. For example, uh, they they know from the small children, they know how to cleaning the room. Oh. Okay. How to yeah make uh, not only learn about the theoretical. Mm. So one thing that I really like uh, the students' respectness to the people around them, especially to the <coughs> teacher, is really good. Ah, okay. So yeah, so that one thing, yeah, one thing, uh, one thing that make me okay. I will make this organization. Why? Because. I felt when I teach, when I got experience abroad, mm -hmm. especially Thailand and Vietnam, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it will be 
it was regrettable if only me who experienced these things. Mm. So I will invite, <coughs> yeah, I will invite the youth too to get the same experience with me. I see, I see. It's so, the it's the value that matters. Yes. So I um so this particular program of yours is actually focused on the volunteering, right? Um, I was focused on the volunteering for youth, perhaps from Indonesia or around ASEAN, to also be able to uh, um, experience your experiences teaching different kind of communities, mm. going to different cultures. But you know, what programs are you already offering to the youth so far who want to volunteer? Um, do you? And I also heard that you um, offer travel-volunteer schemes. Can you tell us more about that? So is that like traveling visa? Traveling you go and to volunteering. Some, a place to teach and what kind of experiences do you have? Would you get? Okay, the experience that I have, actually... Yeah. yeah uh, I tell about the volunteering in Youth for Education. Mm -hmm. uh, the first uh, Youth for Education first program is volunteering by Viet, volunteering international care and education mm -hmm. care we hold in Vietnam. So we invite the Indonesian youth mm -hmm. to volunteering in Vietnam. The goals there we collaboration with local community in Vietnam. Okay. Yeah, we collaboration with local community in Vietnam. So the our volunteers as uh, me join to to teach uh, youth local Vietnam teach English. We focus on uh, investing global mind through, global mind through teaching English. That's the first thing. Language is the first thing to to go to global mind. I think that's my, in my opinion. So the second two, we going to Thailand. We going to rural area that's in Utai Thani. That's about three hours from Bangkok. If we use public transportation, it takes uh, five hours. But uh, if we use private transportation, it's about three hours. That really we invite the volunteers. Uh, as we know, Indonesian youth really like to uh, travel. Mm. So I, yeah, I not only invite them to the common place in the dead country. So mm -hmm. I invite volunteers to, to come the side country to feel how that country life to feel directly the culture to living with local there. Okay, so it's called tra volunteer. So you mm -hmm. travel and also you volunteer. So um, I want to go uh, to Nadia. Nadia, can you share with us about your experience as a volunteer? Where did you work and what did you do? Okay, um, hi Kak. Hi. Um, actually, before I met uh, Youth for Education, um, I started my journey as a volunteer in 2000 and, uh, 2017. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I joined like uh, some organization in my campus. Mm -hmm. It's called uh, ISAC. Okay. And then I went to um, Thailand for about two months. Mm -hmm. And then I live in in a place called Pachburi in the south of Thailand. And then I teach for the kindergarten until wow. the um, junior high school. Oh, nice. Okay. And then <laughs> after that, uh, I think that uh, join one activity, join, like having like one experience isn't enough. And then yeah. after that, I met Youth for Education. Yeah. And then I joined the summer camp with uh, Kashifa and oh. the other teams okay. for two weeks. Yeah, we uh, we had a volunteering in Utai Tani, like Kashifa mentioned before. Mm -hmm. And then we teach for like um, elementary school. Ah. At that time, I was the PIC of a uh, math subject. Okay. <laughs> like math. With, uh, okay. Teach friends. me math. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I was just going to ask because you, you just mentioned that you went through a summer camp first. Mm -hmm. So, um, when you applied, what were the requirements for you to be able to join this particular program? And what sort of training did you go through on that summer camp for you guys to be ready for, you know, um, your travel volunteers? <laughs> say. Did you enjoy that? <laughs> Well, like the requirement isn't really, isn't really um, like 
that much mm-hmm. but you know, we we did like an interview mm-hmm. and then i just like sh- uh, sharing my experience before like mm-hmm. the previous experience and be- because i already went to thailand like for like two months mm. and then i think that i don't have any culture culture shock again when i <laughs> went to thailand uh, for the training camp yeah <laughs> for the training camp and then uh for like the preparing um we just like uh see new things on on mm-hmm. internet and then we just discuss it oh okay. uh, yeah just something like that <laughs> okay you do your own research so Um, yeah. I, I want to know, uh, I, I want to go back to Mbashiva. Mbashiva, maybe you can explain further about the requirements to become a volunteer. And how long is the project? That's, yeah. that's what makes me really curious. Okay, the recruitment. Uh, I hope uh, both of you can join next our project. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, why not? <laughs> Uh, okay, about the recruitment, uh, the first thing uh, oh. that I see from the volunteer is the first strong motivations. Mm. Okay. Yeah, the volunteer, yeah, the youth really want to give impact, mm. to direct impact to the students or mm. to our goals in the field. So, especially youth, because we are youth for education, mm-hmm. it's about the maximum, we are 35 years old. Mm-hmm. Oh, the, the youth is adaptable. So they he have uh, has an English minimum English. Mm-hmm. We don't need to have a TOEFL or IELTS or anything else. Mm-hmm. As long as the youth can communicate well, mm-hmm. we can uh, we can we can invite them to be our volunteer. So supportive and good collaboration too. And the first things uh, we see to we see them uh, their attitude. So mm-hmm. all these things we can. of our FGD. So we selection, we do selections, interview, after interview, we do FGD. In that FGD, we can see how the way the volunteer communicate with the other. Mm-hmm. So we can, oh, this is good, this is good. This is mm. have this, uh, this volunteer have the things that we found or anything else. Mm. I see, okay. So for the duration of the program, Mashifa, maybe you can explain to us about that. Okay, the duration about the duration of the program because we uh, our vision is uh, investing the mm-hmm. government. I did not use digital love or I not use increase. I use mm-hmm. invest because mm-hmm. our program is maximum two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Oh, oh nice. Okay. Yeah. That's it's not maximum too long. Two weeks. That's perfect. <laughs> um, I want to I want to talk to Shifa again because I'm really curious about her experience. When you went to Thailand with Youth for Education, um, the second time, right? You went to Thailand twice already. Good idea. Um, uh, out of curiosity, what did you learn? Val- uh, you know, what did you learn while you were there about the education that a lot of remote areas and children, perhaps, uh, the difficulties, you know, um, that they're experiencing in getting the educational access. What did you learn, and how do you think, uh, you know, uh, projects like yours that you went through make a difference? make a difference about education in Vietnam isn't right yeah okay that make the difference uh, that I found in Thailand sorry in Thailand mm. uh, Thailand is a really I really like how the student acts there mm. okay. like yeah how uh, the simple things yes mm. in Indonesia I, I, I just want to uh, give a simple uh, Example, mm-hmm. uh, when in Indonesia, yeah, when in Indonesia we take something, so we give thank you. Mm-hmm. But in Thailand, they when they before they take something, but before they take something, they take thank you, thank okay. you. So they take something. So they they give greeting to everyone mm-hmm. walk walk through uh, in front of them. That's a really a mess for me. So the yeah. time to uh, the time so that not really full. I see. Okay. That's a lot. Same question to okay. Nadia though. I'm very in, I'm very interested in what a, the perspective of a young person seeing a different culture <laughs> and teaching there and making a difference. Nadia, do you have any special experiences that you um, experienced while you were in Thailand twice? Um, okay. Uh, well, actually. 
when the first time I went to Thailand, it's like a bit awkward because the like you know <laughs> the language is different yeah. and it's really hard to catch up with them. Yeah. <laughs> and then because uh, they only speak Thai and then they don't really then re- they don't really understand in English. So uh, when I have to approach them, I have to, uh, before before I went to Thailand for I go to Thailand, uh-huh. I like studied uh, some Thai language uh-huh. to so I can communicate with them. Oh, ah. proactive! I like that. You have to learn at least a couple of <laughs> words <laughs> first, right? Kapungka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kapungka, something like that. And then. Um, Like the funny, the funny experience that I experienced when I was uh, volunteering in Thailand, mm-hmm. like one of my student, um, she uh, they are they were like a freshman in junior high school, mm-hmm. and then they 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 had like some quarrel mm-hmm. between boy and girl. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I think that they they they. They had like a some relation relationship. Okay. Wow. And at that time, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and then we just like like uh, talking with the Google Translate. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> so the language very it's, it's very real. challenging. Yeah. Eh? Very challenging. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But uh, then, Nadia, um, maybe you can also yeah. share uh, to us, uh, maybe to the people out there, to some of the youth, um, to inspire us to become a volunteer like you. Um, well, maybe um, I'm fully aware that doing volunteering in a short time will not change a lot of things, mm-hmm. let alone the world. But like doing a volunteering, at least you can motivate one person, mm. and then that one person That's can nice. motivate the others. <laughs> That's nice, paid. That is a nice quote. Yeah. That is a very nice quote. I appreciate okay. that. So one person and then one person. Yes. Chain reaction, like you said. Before, yeah, right? we, we were talking about the chain <laughs> reaction before. So um, thank you, Nadia. Back to Shifa. Last question for you. What is your next project, especially with Youth for Education? I mean, we understand the pandemic must have made it a little bit more difficult. But have you actually been, you know, uh, receiving a lot of questions of interest, perhaps, during the pandemic for online training, what it takes to become a volunteer? Um, talk us through what's going to happen next with Youth for Education. Uh, for the next, actually, uh, our we just finished our program, our new program, Tabek Rinjani. That's our first program held in Indonesia. Mm. <clears throat> This is the blessing pandemic for me. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking for the opportunity. <laughs> I'm looking for opportunity to volunteering to hold the program in Indonesia. And the previous is Tabek Rinjani first. So because uh, many are, I got a bless. Enthusiasm for our volunteer in Tabek Rinjani Genuine. So uh, we start to focus or start to will uh, start to uh, start to conduct or start mm-hmm. to prepare Tabek Rinjani Genuine too. Okay, Tabek Rinjani Genuine Maybe next year. So okay. we need to prepare as about six months because this <coughs> is yeah this pandemic okay. uh, we cannot meet directly with uh, <laughs> any team. So mm. it really take a long time to. This one. So the other two, uh, we focus on youth literacy for the okay. next because we have a book. Mm-hmm. Can I share our book? Please do. Yeah. Please do. <laughs> This book, Nadia to oh, Nadia to yeah. have contribution. Okay. This uh, this is program adaptations uh, from offline to online because okay. we know uh, what will we do when. Pandemic because we can go anywhere, mm. so we have this book that volunteer. This is okay. uh, all the volunteers writing here mm-hmm. when they experience to do that. I volunteers. I see. Okay, so Mbashifa, um, uh, can we go somewhere if you want to know more about this project? Do you have any social medias or um, um, any place that we can get information about Youth for Education? Okay, now we focus on Instagram. Okay. Everyone can follow our Instagram at at youth y o o t h for education. For yeah, for is the for is the number number four. Yes, I have it right here. Okay, yeah, num- youth for education. Okay, <laughs> go and check it out, guys. <laughs>
Thank you so yes. much, Mashifa and Nadia. Thank you so much, Mashifa and Nadia. Thank you for your, your story. Uh, and good luck. I hope you guys get to travel and here really, really soon again. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. I mean, you know, she has read though. I love the quote that she said that um, perhaps for two weeks you may not have a big impact, but just the impact on her and how she can further impact different communities, right? That's right. Um, everything she learned, uh, perhaps one day she'd be one of the change makers here in Indonesia. Yay, and we'll keep an eye on that and we will bring you more stories about um, uh, Nadia if um, she makes another <laughs> progress in of her course. volunteering. Of course. But after this break, uh, don't go anywhere. Uh, stay tuned to the Team Morning Show because we'll be right back. <laughs> 